In episode 1 of this Cape Wrath Ultra series, we are at Race HQ for registration and kit check. First though, I have to do my very first Scottish park run starting at 9.30am in Fort William. The series you're about to watch spans 9 episodes, each one covering one day of the Cape Wrath Ultra. I guess I should explain exactly what the Cape Wrath Ultra is. It's a multi-stage race of some 380 kilometres along the Cape Wrath Trail, arguably the toughest hiking trail in the UK, organised by Ure Events. There's a ferry to the start line, you sleep at campsites in remote locations, you run through rugged wilderness on paths ancient and modern, past stunning waterfalls and on epic beaches with a little bit of Harry Potter thrown in, and finish at the lighthouse on the most northwesterly tip of Scotland. But first, I had to finish Parkrun before heading over to the Fort William Football Club in the Film My Run van with a bag full of mandatory kit. It's 1pm on Saturday. Tomorrow, I start the Cape Wrath Ultra. Eight days running across the highlands of Scotland, all the way from here in Fort William, uh, right to the top of Scotland, not John O'Groats, the other side, the West Highlands. And um, I've arrived, uh, I've got my van, look, we're, we're, we're living our best van life in the Film My Run van. Uh, I'm with my buddy, uh, my buddies. Well, I, actually, they're not really friends. I, they're just acquaintances. Um, I, I, you know, I put up with them because, because I have to, because they give me stuff. Paid as well to be your friends. The thing is, everybody's being very organized and getting their kit ready. I have no idea what I'm doing. I, I've just I've got a bag with some stuff in it and I'm just hoping it's accepted as all right. See this is what Jay and James are doing. Look they've got all their bags of stuff and there's bits everywhere and I'm sure they know what it all is and where it's going. Do you know what it all is? And to the last You pin. do don't you? Ninth to grin. <laughs> you see these are the kind of people who bag up each day's food in, in a separate little I'm sealed sorry, bag. Be quiet. <laughs> Look, all right, because they bagged up their food, my wife told me I needed to bag up my food. So I've also bagged up my food, but nevertheless, it's their fault that I've done that. They've also, you know, it got clothes for each day, all nicely organized, ironed probably as well. I've just chucked a load of stuff in. I don't, I, it'll, it'll be all right, won't it? And what could possibly go wrong? This isn't the London Marathon. No, this isn't the London Marathon. You've come to the wrong this takes place than again. Two hours, forty-seven minutes for me. Oh my god! So I unprepared. Wish. I wish. It's ridiculous. This essentially is the start of the Cape Wrath Ultra. We're at registration at the uh, football club here in, in uh, Fort William. I'm in a queue. Uh, I mean, we got here early. What's going on there? So we're just going to go in and get all our kit checked and this is a big job because we've got kit for cold weather, hot weather, uh, standard mandatory kit that we've got to carry with us um, and then we've got to get our photos taken and put our numbers on our dry bags. I've definitely had more of a relaxed Saturday morning than I had the last time I was in this field. Tent boy. On Saturday morning. Yeah, learning how to put up tents. I was putting up tents, I was putting up all the... Mastering your erections. All the big posters in there I was putting up. Uh, so the first excitement of the day has just happened. Over there is David Parrish, last year's winner of the Cape Wrath Ultra. <laughs> Everyone is getting loads of kit checked. So the volunteers will have a list of what they need to check. Um, and it will be quite comprehensive and then each runner has to get all their stuff out of their bag which is why you shouldn't really pack your race bag beforehand just have it all loose and then get everything out to show the volunteer and then you'll be sent over to get a number put onto your dry bag so we have these big dry bags that we put all our camp gear in so you have to put a number on the dry bag and then we get sent over to get a um, race pack with a map and all that kind of stuff in um, and photo taken as well. You don't get trackers until tomorrow morning. In all, 172 runners turned up and registered. 
Back in 2016, when the first event took place, there were 95 starters and 59 finished the full course. My shoes are just in my van there. I've just forgotten to bring them out. What's your number? 30. Why is Kitchen always so stressful? Right, thank you. Thank you very Cheers. much. Cheers. Cheers. Where do I go next? Along there. Right, so kit check all done. Number on my dry bag. So uh, now... What's your number? Number 30. Stephen? Yeah, that's it. That's me. Hello. How are you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this number on the bottom should be zero if it has been set. If it's got a number on there, it's still trying to set, so just keep it outside as much as possible. And that's it. The stress is over. Job done. Kit checked. And uh, gosh, that yeah. Honestly, even though you know you've got all the kit, you kind of panic because you think you might have forgotten something. And and you like you sweat and you stress because <laughs> the the volunteer is waiting for you to get like your rainproof jacket out or your synthetic layer, and uh, and you're scrabbling through your bag trying to find it. It's just it's embarrassing and it's stressful. This is set up quite similarly to how camp will be set up when we get to our first camp at Glenfinnan tomorrow afternoon. So there's an info point. There's always an info point. There's a little shop here that you can buy stuff at. Uh, over there is where they're weighing people's bags. So um, you can hand your, your dry bag in tonight if you want to. This is a weighing machine. So people uh, are, are handing their bags in tonight. Oh so save them having to do it in the morning. So the dry bags are available for you after you've finished your run for the day. They're in your tent when you get there and it's basically got all the gear that you need for the week. So clothes, sleeping equipment, anything else that you might want. And then at every campsite we also have uh, hot drinks, available on demand or hot and cold drinks any any time you want them whenever you're in camp you can go to the volunteers here they'll get you hot and cold drinks and we also have supplied hot and cold water it, every camp all eight days you have hot running water if you need it no showers unfortunately but you know you can't have everything can you and we're having a meal tonight uh, first meal of the event uh, about seven o'clock tonight after race briefing. So welcome to the K Rath Ultra. Thank you for coming along. Um, I get a sense that some of you are nervous. Tomorrow is like a prologue, so treat it as a warm up. Just kind of ease yourself into into the event um, and enjoy yourselves. Since 2023, Uri Events has offered an alternative shorter event called the Explorer for those who don't make the cut-off in the main race or who want a more relaxed running holiday. Of the 172 starters in 2024, the coming days would see attrition for some, but a unique and memorable adventure for everyone. In episode 2 of the Cape Breath Ultra, Oh my, look at that. I didn't even check it and it's 19.7 <laughs> kilos. I feel, I feel used, yes. Satellite navigation has fallen out of my backpack. Feeling the heat now. Just get down this hill without breaking my leg and we'll be happy. 